It's episode number four of the Ultimate CAD Chair, and we're fast approaching the project finish line. This time we'll talk about the industrial design of our chair, and then check out the progress of our chassis prototype out in the fabrication shop. We'll also analyze the environmental impact of our model with an engineer who specializes in sustainability. Finally, we'll unveil the complete design of the ultimate office environment. But first, we're going to talk with an incredible designer from Holland. We've got Rob Wolkers on the line with us. Can you hear me, Rob? I can. Thanks for having me on the show, Jeremy. Hey, we're looking at your designs up on the screen right now. They look unbelievable. Can you walk us through what you're thinking behind them? Well, my main goal is to develop a chair that makes being at work feel like being on vacation. So while you're sitting in your office environment, you actually feel like you're out drifting on a boat somewhere. It looks like you have this thing floating on water. Yeah, that's actually a 360 degree waterfall with an LED backlight to make it to make a chair appear like it's in water. But the, uh, the waterfall makes for a great background sound too. This is a pretty ambitious design you have here, Rob. Any other features you were dreaming of? Auto rotate mechanisms, surround sound speakers, maybe a biometric system to recognize the user. Well, these ideas are great, you know, but you know as well as I, time and money are critical issues in product design, and compromises are definitely going to have to be made. Yeah, I hear you. Don't worry, you're still going to have a major influence on this chair, I promise you that. Well, Jeremy, I'm enjoying the series and happy to share my ideas. I can't wait to see the final design. Hey, Rob, thanks for sending them. I'll see you later. Yeah, I'll see you later. Now that we've seen what guys like Rob can do, it's time to do some surface modeling of our own inside SOLIDWORKS. All right, let's take a look at what I've come up with here. Basically, you're looking at an assembly with two surface bodies. The back of the chair made out of fiberglass, the front of the chair made out of memory foam. Surfacing inside SOLIDWORKS is really easy to do. The back fiberglass shell is only made up of a few features. You start with a 2D sketch, you extrude it all the way to the width of the chair that you want, and then you incorporate some mid-plane sketches to play around with the shape. And these are just spline tools that you use to make sure your tangencies look good, there are no seams, and then we can finish it off with that center cut, and I'll add some radiuses just to make it smooth as well. Now, what's great about doing it in SOLIDWORKS here is you can see some straight pieces. Those are gonna be my aluminum plates that we bolt to. So I don't have to switch between surface modeling and, and solid modeling. It, it all lives in this environment, easy to use. If I make a change to the plates, uh, the surface will update automatically, which is, which is really, really powerful. And the memory foam is, is a, just a custom shape I came up with, and if, if it was something I wanted to tweak a little bit more than just using 2D sketches, I could use a freeform tool inside SOLIDWORKS to push and pull control points and get the shape the way I want. What's cool is if we want to make a change, we can just modify this. We do not have to destroy the surface. There's no need to rebuild it. Really cool, really powerful. This chair is starting to look like something futuristic. All right, that's what our final chair will look like. Let's take a break from the computer. Let's go check in on the progress of the chassis build out in the fabrication shop. I've also invited a sustainability expert to meet me out there and talk about green product design. Let's go. Hey, how you doing, man? Good to see you, Jeremy. Thanks. Thanks for coming out. Let's go see what these guys are up to. Yeah, let's. What are we, union now? Lunchtime. The downfall of every great design civilization. Yeah, I thought you were gonna make this thing out of metal. Well, the wood's temporary. Actually, the choice right now is aluminum versus steel. Everyone's weighing in on it on the website. And that's why you're here, actually, so that we can make a better environmental choice before picking one. Yeah, you know, that's key. There's a lot of large companies like Walmart and IBM, Procter & Gamble, that are releasing these supplier scorecards where they're rating their suppliers on sustainability. The higher the score, the more they become a preferred supplier. Well, let's fire up SOLIDWORKS sustainability on the big screen, see how we're doing on our design. Let's do it. So here's sustainability, completely integrated with our SOLIDWORKS interface. Let's start with aluminum as our material and set some options like manufacturing it in Asia and shipping it to the US. This is the baseline that we'll assess all the other designs against. Okay, so now if we compare that to steel. All right, let's try that. So you see the green here, that's showing us that pound for pound, steel has a lower environmental impact than aluminum in this design. Where does it get its numbers from? Actually, this is decades of data. Here, they've measured every input from all the mining, smelting, shaping, transportation, and disposal, right down to the electricity mix. All right, Ashim, break it down in the real world. Why is steel actually a greener choice over aluminum? Well, so here, take this aluminum can, for example. To make this, first you gotta take this rock called bauxite, 
and refine that into aluminum oxide and then smelt that into aluminum. And that smelting takes a ton of electricity. Compared to steel, making steel from iron ore, that doesn't take as much energy. All right, well, what if we recycle that can? Well, if I toss this in the recycle bin, I just saved enough energy to power my plasma TV for about an hour. That's a lot of cost benefit. Uh, that's impressive. Well, thanks for coming in, Ashin. Hey, it's been a lot of fun. And I hope your build guys come back. I'd love to see this thing in, in all its glory. Me too. Apparently, my build guys are waiting on a final design. Luckily, I'm one step ahead of them. All right, are you ready to see the final design? Let me take you through it. Okay, let's start with the floor. We're gonna add the chassis on top of that. The gantry or the linear actuator is gonna sit on top of the chassis. The next piece is the wall surround. Easy to assemble, easy to take apart. Next up is going to be a drafting table. In the spirit of my buddy Rob Wolkers, I did add a waterfall to the design. It's gonna be uh, separate from the chair, off along one of the wall panels. And then of course we've got this custom chair. There's gonna be supporting arm to connect it to the linear actuator. There's the displays we need to worry about and those will have two positions. One is a, a non-working position where they're flush mounted against the wall and then they'll move using an ergotron mount into a load or work position when we're in our chair. I also downloaded 3D Connexion controllers from 3D Content Central. Now finally, it's not the ultimate CAD chair without having all the controls at our fingertips, which brings us to this week's vote. All right, this week's vote you can totally geek out on. We need to power up this entire assembly from the chair. You need switches. Do you guys want to vote for military grade switches? Or do you want minivan grade switches? I'm not gonna tell you how I'm voting. We'll have to see what you guys choose. All right, you guys remember to get your votes in. We'll see you next time on Let's Go Design.